In the previous video, we emphasized the fact that a firm, if a firm wants to minimize total cost, we have to look at the relationship between inputs and output. And the relationship between inputs and output, the non-financial one, is given to us by engineers or technologists, and that is called the production function. We also distinguished between what is a short run and what is long run decision making. And as a first step, we have decided to focus on short run. And in the previous video, we also drew what is called the total output curve, which is a relationship between a quantity of output produced and the labor. This is chart one from the previous video, which is the total output curve. And this is a relationship between total output produced and the number of workers. Here, what we did last time is the following. We also looked at what information, extra information this graph contains, and that is we can figure out very easily how much output is produced by the first worker and we know it is five units and then once to the first worker we add the second worker or we employ the second worker how much is the contribution to output of the second worker it is seven units how do we know this the total output produced by two workers one and two together is 12. Output produced by the first worker is 5. So this output produced by the second worker must be 7. And suppose the first worker is called John and the second worker is called Jack. So we know how much output is produced by John. It is 5 units. How much output is produced by Jack? It is seven units. Now, this information or the contribution to output by each worker as if by name is called marginal product of labor. And so what is marginal product of labor? It's productivity of each worker as if by name like in the case of John and Jack, we can figure out productivity of each of these workers. <clears throat> so here is the formal definition of marginal product of labor, which we'll abbreviate as MPL, and that is the contribution of each subsequent worker to output. We know how much output is produced by John, how much output is produced by Jack, and so on. How do we measure it? In a way, we have shown this on the previous slide, but this is how we measure it. It is change in quantity divided by change in number of workers. That will give us marginal product of labor or productivity of each worker to output. And let us see how this is calculated. Here is table two, which is essentially a copy of table one on the previous video. And the only column that I have added here is MPL or marginal product of labor. And, and how do we calculate marginal product of labor? Look at the following. <clears throat> Suppose this firm employs no workers and then it decides to employ one worker. What has happened to output? It has increased from 0 to 5. And so what is change in quantity? Change in quantity is 5 minus 0. 5 minus 0 divided by 1 minus 0, which is change in labor. And what will this number be? This will be 5. Now the, suppose the firm has already employed the first worker and decides to employ the second worker. And the output increases from 5 to 12. 
And so what is the MPL associated with the second worker? It will be 12 minus 5 divided by 2 minus 1 and that will be 7. In a similar way, we can find out the productivity of the third worker. It will be 21 minus 12, which is 9, divided by 3 minus 2, which is 1. So here we will get 9. What about the fourth worker? It is 7. What about the fifth worker? It is 6. What about the sixth worker? It is 5. What about the seventh worker? Three. And these numbers are not showing up, but this is the eighth worker, one unit of capital, and this output is 40. So when you add the eighth worker, what is the contribution of this worker to output? It reduces output from 42 to 40, or his productivity is negative too. Now, in a business world, no one will hire a worker which can reduce the total output produced by others. So where can we find examples like this? It's very rare. And where we find this is, uh, is essentially in family-run businesses. For example, you look at an overpopulated country, for example, in Africa, where the average landhold sizing, uh, size is, say, one acre. And suppose there's a family of seven or eight people. And in this case, we have when you have your family members, all of them will work on the same plot of land. And maybe the fifth or the sixth child that the family has may have a nuisance value in the sense it brings down the output. So in a business sense, no one is going to employ such workers, but we may find examples of this in family run businesses and even that is likely to be rare now based off the table two on the previous slide we can plot these those points and on the vertical axis what we have is marginal product of labor or mpl in short and on the horizontal axis we have units of labor <clears throat> and what we do is we plot those points. So what is the productivity of the first worker? It is five units. What is the productivity of the second worker? It is seven units. What is the productivity of the third worker? Nine units. And this goes on. What is the productivity of the eighth worker? It is negative two. So this curve, when we join all these points, this curve is called the MPL curve. And what this shows is a relationship between marginal product of labor and units of labor. And that is, what is the productivity of the first worker? What is the productivity of the second worker? And so on. <clears throat> now, what you observe here is the following. Suppose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all these workers are exactly the same in terms of the attitude, in terms of the education, in terms of skills or how they work. And what we find is the following. Suppose all these workers are exact replicas of each other. When we employ the first worker, there's some productivity associated with that worker. We employ the second worker. We find that the productivity of second worker is greater than that of the first worker. The productivity of second worker is 7. The productivity of the first worker is 5. Then the third worker comes, and the productivity of the third worker is greater than that of the second worker. And we know the productivity of the second worker is better than that of the first worker. So in this stretch, let's call this A, B what you find is as you increase number of workers marginal product of labor goes on increasing and then we hit a maximum and then it starts to decline as we add more and more workers and then it becomes zero and may become negative as well so if you look at this stretch 
for example a to b a to b what you find is as you increase number of workers marginal product of labor increases and then you look at the stretch b to c and what do you find here as you increase number of workers productivity of each subsequent worker falls and we believe this is a pattern in business and and this is the path businesses are likely to follow initially when they hire workers what they are likely to see is the productivity of the next worker is greater than that of the previous worker and then it hits a maximum in terms of individual productivity and then productivity of each subsequent worker starts to decline it can become zero that means this person contributes nothing to output or may become negative that means this person is bringing down the total level of output and the previous slide what we saw is initially on the stretch a to b when you hire workers a to b what you find is as you increase number of workers the productivity of each subsequent hire worker is higher than that of the previous one we believe this is so true at the initial level of business that this is governed by a law called law of increasing marginal product of labor and what this means is as we increase l or number of workers productivity of each subsequent worker is higher than that of the previous one and then we also looked at the stretch bc and here what we found is as we increase number of workers productivity of each subsequent worker becomes lower and this again we believe is based on facts and that is as we increase number of workers the productivity of each subsequent worker is lower than that of the previous one and so this is called the law of decreasing marginal product of labor or we can abbreviate this as ldmpl now the best way to understand or visualize this is for example when you come to the class initially you are excited about learning and so every unit of time that passes by your learning or your understanding enhances and then you start getting bored with a particular lecture and so what you find is as time goes by or the longer the lecture your understanding or your productivity in terms of understanding has become lower and lower as time passes by and one of the reasons these lecture videos have been kept short is simply because i believe that students will learn in smaller doses so i have created videos which are no longer than 15 minutes if they were 75 minutes what will happen to you in the 60th minute or the 70th minute you can know so we believe this applies to different real world situations law of increasing marginal product followed by law of decreasing marginal product of labor